Turns out election season is not over, though. There is one more election next month, a special election, and we are paying close attention to it. This is for a state Senate seat, Drew Springer versus Shelley Luther. We had Springer on our program here a few weeks ago, so this morning, Shelley Luther is with us. She's the Dallas salon owner who made headlines for refusing to abide by those COVID lockdown restrictions earlier this year. State Senate District 30 stretches across the top of DFW from McKinney up to Sherman, over to Wichita Falls, and all the way down to Stephenville. And this race, as Shelley's about to say here, is particularly important because it's grassroots versus the establishment among Texas Republicans. Shelley, thank you for the time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. L let's start with some news of the day here. Texas has now passed a million cases of the coronavirus and hospitals in, in El Paso and Lubbock and Amarillo are all at critical capacity there. W what should the state government be doing going into the winter? I don't think the state government should be doing anything. I think that if there are cases in certain areas, there's not a blanket solution for anything, and we should leave um, those decisions up to the counties and the cities. They have a better idea of what's going on there, and someone in a state position does not have any idea what's going on there unless we're there every day. So I would leave it up to local governments for sure. Are you concerned at all about the cases of COVID might be getting worse as we go into the winter, Shelley? I mean, it's always a concern, um, but like I said, there are um, many things to consider when it comes to that. And if people are concerned, they should stay home or um, do what they feel is right for them and their family. Voters will see you and Drew Springer on the ballot next month uh, there in the district. What would you say is the clearest difference between you and your opponent? I'm just definitely not a politician. I, that, that is the hugest difference. I don't have any ties to Austin. I don't have any political PAC money. I don't have any lobbyist money. Um, my focus is on the people of Texas and especially the, my constituents in Senate District 30. And my decisions and what I do in Austin completely reflects their ideas. And I'm gonna vote as if I'm looking them straight in the eye. Why do, why do you think some of other state leaders uh, or, or other, not state leaders, but other political uh, elected officials ha have clashed with you over this? These are other Republicans that, that I saw the, the famous video on Facebook. I don't know how famous it is, but I saw the video on Facebook uh, of you clashing with another uh, elected official um, over this. And it, it seems to me like there's a rift inside the Republican Party. There definitely is, and it's it's the establishment versus the grassroots, and um, the establishment in Austin and in Washington that President Trump is fighting. But um, in Austin, they've got their set ways. It's a good old boy system, and they don't want someone coming in who um, is not going to agree with everything that they say and is going to stand up for the people. And so there's a little ripple effect going on where um, I'm almost positive most of them do not want me there because I'm going to buck the system. Wouldn't that be hard to actually get things done, though, if, if you couldn't build a majority around legislation that you wanted passed? You know what? I'm willing to work with anybody. And I know Governor Abbott was asked the same question. If I were to be a senator, would he work with me? He said he would work with anybody. I think the biggest problem is the Republican platform has been the same for many sessions. And it seems like we keep adding all these tiny bills, but not going after the really big choices that... Um, you know, Senate District 30 for sure is wanting. And so I'm just going in there to make sure that there's transparency, clarity, and that the politicians who say they're doing something in Austin uh, or who say they're doing something, you know, in their district are actually taking care of those things in Austin. I wanted to ask you about the, um, the, the, the campaign as well, too, because you had uh, significantly more money than Drew Springer had, who is your opponent in the runoff. Uh, in the end, though, there were only 164 votes that separated separated you two. Did, did What do you think happened? Did you do something wrong, something you would have done differently? And, and what's your strategy moving forward? Absolutely not. Um, I, You know, Drew Springer was campaigning for at least six months before I was. Um, they knew about that seat opening early. And um, 
he has, I think, four counties that he's already representing that are in our current SD30 district. So he won those. But I feel like I won, I think I won all of the other counties. And I was only given about 30 days to campaign. And a lot of people don't know that I'm the salon owner. They they know if I introduce myself as Shelly Luther, they say, Oh, nice to meet you. And I say, I'm the salon owner who, you know, went against the shutdown. People instantly know who I am and are backing me. So I, I think it's just name recognition. And we we need to make sure that people know that I'm the one that stood up and I'll, st I'll stand up in Austin. All right, Shelly, thank you so much for the time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And now to the